Hi there, adventure seekers. I said I had a little bit of a surprise for you. So this is kind of an update on our solar situation and the surprise I talked about in our solar install videos. So if you haven't watched the solar install videos yet, links in the description below for those. Go check them out and then come back here and catch up with us. You make me understand. So what's this surprise? Well, it's pretty cool. For those of you who have messed with Victron products before, you may have realized or knew in your research, you may have come across a very serious flaw really with the battery monitor and the solar charge controller. And that is the Bluetooth range really stinks. As a matter of fact, our bed is literally right above my head right now in this slide i sleep on this side so my pillow is right here i could not connect to my solar controller i could connect to the um, battery monitor but not solar controller which is weird because they're about that far apart right here sometimes it connected sometimes it didn't so we're going to not only fix that issue but we're going to be able to monitor our solar anywhere we're at as long as i have um, internet connectivity and how we're going to do that is not by buying a Victron Venus for $300 you know nope for longtime viewers you know that we try to do things inexpensively and still give you the same functionality or more in this case we're using this this is a Raspberry Pi this is basically for those of you not familiar with the Raspberry Pi this is a full-blown computer it has a gig of RAM in it uh, believe it or not it doesn't have memory, it does have an SD card slot, and it has four USB ports, uh, Ethernet connector, wireless, and Bluetooth is all on board. So, how am I gonna get this to talk to those devices and talk to the internet? It's actually super simple. Victron, because they are an awesome company, don't get me wrong, despite the, the issues with their Bluetooth here, Victron actually makes the software for their Venus um, product available for free. You can download it and install it on a Raspberry Pi. And it's really simple. And just to show you how simple it is, well, let's take about five minutes or so, and or less, and let's build this Raspberry Pi and install the software. And then we'll come right back here. Got the computer set up. I've got a hard wire to the Raspberry Pi into my router because you got to set up Bluetooth somehow. If you have a USB monitor or a cable that can, you can connect from USB to a monitor, you can just plug that into the Raspberry Pi and see it boot up and, and work on it that way. But you'll also need a USB keyboard and mouse. Don't have all that stuff, so we're just going to be using it from here. But the first thing we got to do is actually install Raspberry Pi on the computer. And for that, you need an SD card. It doesn't need to be a very big one. This is 128 gig. Simply because, and that's, I have it laying, I had it laying around. So we're going to go ahead and download the image, show you where you get that from. Links to all this stuff's in the description below, so you don't need to worry about writing any of it down. So we're gonna go here to the Raspberry Pi install Venus image. Actually gives you step-by-step -step instructions. Now what I have is the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. It's supported with the same notes as Raspberry Pi 3B, which, so we're gonna go ahead and download the latest image normally found here. Click on this and what you're gonna to want to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I'm filming this on the 5th of June, 2021. And you want the zip files, which are these guys up here. And you want probably the last one. And it just happens to be dated 4-12-2021. Now, depending on when you watch this, there may be a newer one. We just click on that to download it, and it's going to save. And then once you get it downloaded, you unzip it and put it somewhere, where you, desktop or wherever you want to, where you can remember it. And then we go to the next step. Burn the image file, which is a .rpi-sdimg, on an SD card. On Windows, use Win32 Disk Imager or the Bellina etcher. I'm going to go ahead and install the SD card. Hey, it's empty. What do you know? I've already installed the Win32 Disk Imager, so I'm going to go ahead and run that. Make sure the device is the, the drive letter assigned to 
your SD card because this is going to override it. So whatever's on that SD card is going to go away. So make sure there's nothing on it you want first. I'm going to click here and then you're going to go down to disk image which says disk images and you're going to select this asterisk dot asterisk or start at star and then you just find wherever you put the image. And for me it's right here. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click right and it gives me a warning and yep and now we're going to write to the disk it's going to take a few minutes once it's done we'll plug it into the raspberry pi turn it on it'll boot up and we'll go from there so once it's done formatting uh, when if you're using especially if you're using a windows machine you're going to get the write successful you just click on ok and then you're going to get a bunch of windows explorer windows opening up and error messages just ignore them go ahead and pull the sd card out now it's time to install the SD card into the Raspberry Pi and turn it on. So let's do that. I took it out of the case just to make it easier to put the SD card in. So if you look on the back, it goes in right there. And don't worry, it only goes in one way. So if you don't put it in the right way, it won't work. Since I have this out of the case, I'm actually not touching it at all. I'm just holding the, the network cable. So now I'm going to plug it in and wait for it to boot up. It's booted up. I saw the flashing lights on the network card. So it's probably got an IP, it should have an IP address. We're gonna go ahead and follow these directions. We've already done number seven, number eight, and we didn't do that. You can use Victron Connect and it will scan your network. And in case it's the same LAN device, it'll find it. Or I can just type this HTTP venus.local in your browser. So we'll just click on it and see what happens, shall we? And there's a remote console. So a couple of quick things. The mouse kind of works. Scroll buttons don't. So we want to go ahead and set this thing up. Your best bet is just to go down the list. And as you can see, I've got the VRM portal um, information logging enabled. Yep. Portal ID you're going to need to know to set up. And go back. Here's where you want to set up Wi-Fi. Let me go ahead and connect to my 5 gigahertz network. It's going to be fun putting in the password. And once you finish putting in the password, click the checkbox in the bottom right. You can see the Wi-Fi is on. It's found an IP address. We're good to go on Wi-Fi. And that's pretty much it. We're all connected. See how easy that was to set up and install? We're all done. And as you can see, there's really nothing because we don't get plugged in. All right, so now we're switching to the phone. I open up the Victron Connect app, and you can see right here at the bottom, Raspberry Pi. That's the device. But we need to add it to VRM, which is Victron's remote management system. So into vrm.victronenergy.com. If you don't have an account there, you need to create one. And then you just, over here on the left, click on Add Installation. You're going to click on Venus GX. It's going to ask for a portal ID number. Now we're going to jump over back to our remote console well there's our vrm portal id right there unfortunately you can't copy and paste it so i'm just going to type it out on in notepad put in that portal id request access well we got it all set up got it named now let's go outside and get the cables hooked up and power and get all this done see that was easy right so now we're going to install this and we're going to go ahead and install it in here we're going to do this again a little bit different um, it does come with a 12 volt to 110 connector and that plugs into this. This actually, it's a, it's a micro USB, provides power, and this is actually just an on off switch, which is pretty cool. But we're not going to use 110 volts because, well, I don't have a 110 volt plug back here. But you know what I do have back here? I got a lot of batteries. A lot of battery. So let's start going over our, our costs. Links to all these products are in the description below as well. This was 70 bucks with the case. So we're gonna need that. A couple of command strips because we're gonna mount it to the wall here. And this guy right here, which is a 12 volt to micro USB. We're just gonna hook these wires up, positive and negative, plug that in, and we've got that going. Now the other thing is that I think this was like $12 for two. You had to buy them in a set of two, the ones I found. So right now I've got 80, 85 bucks. That's it versus 300. Now the one thing you're gonna to have to buy no matter which way you go, buying the Venus from the company or doing the Raspberry Pi method, um, you do need to, you also need an SD card obviously. I had one laying around so it didn't cost me anything. You don't need a huge one. Uh, I think this one is actually 32 um, gig. 
and it's got plenty of room left on it. You also have to buy these. And these are Victron cables that go from USB to the Victron connector on the devices. Here's the other issue I had. Okay, I said already this has Bluetooth capability. The devices down here, the battery monitor and the solar charge drawer also are Bluetooth. However, they will not communicate to the Raspberry Pi or the Victron for that matter. The Victron doesn't even have Bluetooth. They won't communicate with those devices um, via Bluetooth. The only way they connect via Bluetooth is to the Victron app on your phone. So that's, eh. So I had to go buy these cables. But again, you're gonna have to buy these cables no matter what. So, you know, we're still, we're still a good $200 in our pocket savings which by the way is the cost of one solar panel for our install at least so think about it like that so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and connect these cables up i've got connectors to, for the wires to plug into the 110 volt and i also have a whole bunch of tie straps to make sure my wiring looks good so let's get to work all right so the first one hi <laughs> so the first one's going to be easy because it's right here. I didn't install the battery monitor anywhere because it usually has a wall mount that goes inside and I'm not using it because I'm using my phone. So it's just laying here. So easy connection here. I take this, I take this, I plug it in, we're good. Then I just have to connect the other end which is USB to my Raspberry Pi and that's it of course I'm not gonna do this like this because I gotta run I'm gonna run the cables and I've still got to install the DC power right here so that's really all there is to it so then it's just a matter of routing the cables and once we get all that done we'll be able to make sure the devices are recognized on the Raspberry Pi and then we can check them remotely from any internet connected device. Okay, so I've got my USB cable hooked up to the battery monitor and it's hooked up to our solar charge controller which is behind this panel and all these cables here so you really can't see it. As you can see, we can see it here on local. So we're just gonna click on it. We're gonna connect to it. We're gonna go remote and rotate my screen. So we'll rotate the screen. And as you can see, we see nothing. So let's start plugging in devices and see what happened. First thing we're gonna plug in is the battery monitor. And we can see, there it is, there's our battery. Now we'll plug in our solar charge controller. In case you couldn't tell, it's getting kind of dark, so we're not gonna see much charging going on. But as you can see, we've used 55% of our battery. And hey, there's the solar controller. We got them all on here. Now, we're, all we need to do now is just clean up this installation, because I'm actually looking at this through um, a web page, so I can monitor my stuff just that easy. And as you can see, zero watts on the PV charger because well it's not charging because it's no sun and batteries 55% and they're discharging because well we're boondocking not bad pretty easy especially for you know saving 200 bucks that was a big surprise if you have any questions about this or any of our solar installs leave us in the comments below we'll do our best to answer them and if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button ring that notification bell so you'll know whenever we post new content whether that be campground reviews how to's or just our out and about crazy stuff. And if you'd like to help us help small local veterans charities all over the country, go ahead and uh, either join our Patreon page, our YouTube membership page, or buy some of our swag. Links to all that stuff is in the description below as well. So thanks so much for watching, and may your next journey be an epic adventure. Bye.